Esmond. Well, you shouldn't have come here tonight, Douglas. It's too dangerous. I had to come. I couldn't sleep. I've walked the streets for hours. This is not your wife's fault, Kennedy. I can explain. You try to explain this? You've got to listen to me, Jim. I've been in love with Duncan for months. What are you going to do? Mr. Channing is not going to destroy the happiness of another man's home. There he lies. That's the cleverest charade I've ever seen. And isn't Kennedy the old Barrymore, though? I wonder how much of this is on the level. Can't anybody guess this word? <laughs> <laughs> My lead, isn't it? Yes, your lead. Well, I'll uh, I'll concede you a trick in hearts. Oh. Well, what's the use of playing with a criminologist? He knows everything. Uh, uh, Montrose, yes. uh, some professional advice. Ah, a client. Uh, Walter's sister and her husband are playing charades. Uh, Jim just caught Channing chiseling with Esme and, and shot him. Well, uh, what did Esme say? Uh, she said Dunk is her, is her ideal. What about Dunk? Well, uh, he's still lying on the floor. Ideal? Lies. Well, that's pretty obvious. Idealize. Oh, my hat for the brain. <laughs> Idealized. <laughs> I guess it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll win the prize. <laughs> Esme should have gone on the stage. She's a good actress. Yes, she is. Hey. Do you dumbbells want us to do the whole thing again? Well, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I figured the whole thing out by myself. <laughs> the word, the word, it is idealized. Well, allow me to be the last to congratulate you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Come on, Doug. You can get up now. It's all over. Dunk. Dunk. Jim. He's dead. Long. Well, you don't think that I... Why, I loaded the gun myself. You were there, Colton. You saw me load the gun with blanks. He's a lovely chill. Why? Why? This thing's impossible. Come upstairs, Jim. But Colton, I... Come on. Come on. See, I'm in the dummy, yes. There we are. What is it, Lawrence? Beg pardon, Miss Julia. Mr. Kennedy just shot his secretary. Yes, we know that. They were playing a charade game. But Mr. Channing is dead. What? Oh. Lawrence, are you quite sure? 
Quite sure, sir. Now, Jim, this is serious. It's homicide. Let me tell them, Colton. Somebody put real bullets in this gun. No. I'm your lawyer. And I don't want you to talk to anyone until I find out what this is all about. He died instantly. Oh. I'll take Mrs. Kennedy to her room. That's right. Don't let anyone touch the body until the police arrive. It's Lucky Montrose is here, isn't it? Well, what do you mean? Well, he sold the Brown murder. Murder? Why, you don't think that this is this whole thing looks very fishy to me. Now, folks, I'm going to call the police. This is just, uh, just a regrettable accident and must be considered only as such. You understand? Yes, we understand, Mr. Colton. No, that's right. Just a bit. Just a bit. Millie, get some smelling sauce. There's some in Miss Julie's room. Good. Inspector Taylor. Yes, sir. Where's the body? Over there. I, I'm Mr. Kennedy's lawyer. He, uh, he accidentally shot Mr. Duncan Channing, his second. Where's Mr. Kennedy now? Upstairs, in his room. Waiting to give you his statement. Well, a bullseye, Chief. Right through the pump, huh? Yeah. How did this happen? It was an accident, Mr. Policeman. Inspector. Well, anyway, I am Julia Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy's aunt. I oh, yeah. And? They were acting a charade. You know, you guessed the word. I guessed the word? Yes. No. I mean, everyone has to guess the word. Was it an uh, accident? Certainly it was an accident. No, that's not what I mean. It was idealized. Idealized. That's the word. Are you trying to make me confused? <laughs> You're confused already. Where were you when this uh, game was being played? I was upstairs playing bridge. Then how did you know what the word was? They told me beforehand. Oh. You knew this thing was going to happen before it happened, eh? And who was they? Mr. Channing and Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, Mrs. Kennedy's in this too, is she? Where is she? She fainted. Mr. Montrose helped her upstairs to her room. Oh. Is Philip Montrose here? Yes, he is, thank heaven. Thank heaven is right. He'll at least be able to give us a sensible account of what happened. Where's the other body? Oh! Other body? Isn't one body enough? There isn't any other body. At 11.30 tonight, someone phoned headquarters that a murder had been committed in this house and the two people were dead. It's ten minutes past twelve, and it just happened. You're crazy. The 
It's 11.40 and you're crazy and your clock is cuckoo. Why, that clock was correct at 11.30. To find out who changed the clock, we'll find out what this is all about. Ex pardon, sir. I changed the clock, sir. You changed the clock, Lawrence? Yes, Miss Julia. Mr. Kennedy wanted the little playlist to begin right on the stroke of 12. Then you phoned for the police. No, sir, I did not. Well, who did? I don't know, sir. Who used the phone in the last half hour? We're getting no place fast. Who was here when the shot was fired? Were you? Oh, oh, yes. uh, I was sitting within 20 feet of them, Inspector. You go ahead. Well, uh, uh, we were all sitting in the darkness when suddenly we saw the shadow of a man outside the door. What door? The front door, of course. Oh, that door? Yeah, quite. Uh, well, did you see now, where was I? Uh, you were at the front door. Uh, oh, yes, 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 dear me. Uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, we were all sitting in the darkness when suddenly we saw the shadow of a man outside the door. I might have known it was you. One bullet was for Channing, and you thought I'd use the other on myself. But you're not going to get away with it. I've left a letter telling of the previous attempt on my life and pointing to you as the one who seeks my death. And then Mr. Kennedy saw his wife with Mr. Channing, and he pointed his gun at him, and... Oh, uh, so sorry. And he fired... <laughs> There's the other body. Keep the crowd down here. This is my house. I can go if I want to, I guess. Well, guess again, sister. This time the word is no. Keep her down here. Why, you... Uh, This looks like it. Please. Who fired that shot? I don't know. I, I didn't hear any shot. I had been out of this room all evening. I'm not asking you for an alibi. Yeah. I, I don't know a thing. You haven't got anything on me. And you've no, no, no right to talk to me that way. Inspector Taylor? Hello, Mr. Montrose. Did you hear that shot? Yes, I, I thought it came from this end of the hall. It did not. Hey, listen, you're not going to pin this on me. Now, Walter, no one's trying to pin anything on you. We're all unnerved by this terrible accident. I was with Mrs. Kennedy in her room. Aunt Julie's room is at the end of the hall. That is Walter Grayson's. This is Mr. Kennedy's room. Kennedy? I want to see him. Well, Kennedy's downstairs. Oh, no. His lawyer told me he was waiting in his room to see me. Then maybe that shot...
Looks like an open and shut case to me. Murder and suicide. It's all very puzzling. But I tell you, there's no reason for it, Inspector. Channing and Mr. Kennedy were the best of friends, at least so far as I know. Oh, come in, Lawrence. Mr. Kennedy is dead, sir? Yes. That's terrible. Poor Mrs. Kennedy. Lawrence, as a matter of fact, Channing and Mr. Kennedy were on the best of terms, weren't they? No, sir, they were not. They were sore at each other? They had a violent quarrel in the library this morning, sir. And Mr. Channing told me at lunchtime that he'd handed in his resignation to Mr. Kennedy. What did they quarrel about? I don't know, sir. Does Mrs. Kennedy know about this? I doubt it, sir. Well, that's all. You can go. What did I tell you? Murder and suicide. Now, here's the case in a nutshell. The quarrel, animosity, sudden impulse to murder. The murder has a revulsion of feeling, can't face the consequences, and takes the easiest way out. But a suicide generally leaves a note. Well, this one didn't. Probably didn't have time. Downtown mystery. Read all about it, second edition. Read all about it. Read all about the big murder. Big bird, big Kennedy murder downtown. Kennedy murder. Read all about it. Read all about it, folks. Read all about it. They might have been in South America for all they seem to know about this murder. I haven't been able to get a single bit of information out of any of you. But don't think you're fooling me. The murder is in this room right now. Big pardon, sir. Mrs. Kennedy will see you now, sir. Well, she will, will she? Mr. Montrose, shall we go up? Where you are, Grayson. You better do as the policeman says, Walter. We can get along without you, too, sister. <laughs> I don't want anyone to leave this room until I come back. I think this is an absolute imposition. Well, I think it's quite thrilling. Don't you realize that one of us is a murderer? Inspector Taylor, madam. I'm sorry to trouble you, Esme, but there are some questions which must be answered. I understand. Mrs. Kennedy, who do you think killed your husband? I don't know. He didn't have an enemy in the world, as far as I know. Did you see your husband when you went upstairs? No, I didn't. Did you see anything out of the ordinary as you went up the hall? Well, I... Uh, Inspector, I'm afraid Mrs. Kennedy wasn't in a position to see anything. She collapsed, and I had to send her maid to Aunt Julia's room to get the smelling salts. Millie Scripps. Did 
you see anyone in the hallway? No one, sir. And you went direct to Miss Julia's room and returned immediately? Yes, sir. She's lying, Inspector. I saw her standing outside the card room door at the other end of the hall. How do you explain that? Why, why I forgot about that, sir. I, I went down to talk to Mr. Grayson. Did you talk to him? No, sir, he wasn't there. How did you know he wasn't there? Because I rapped three times. Mr. Grayson has testified that he didn't leave the card room all evening. Did you go in? No, sir, I didn't. I rapped on the door and called Mr. Grayson, Mr. Grayson. And, uh... Got no answer. Millie, you came into this room after the shot was fired. Where were you when you heard the report? Why, I heard it while I was standing in front of the card room door, sir. But you said you didn't hear the report. There was no report while she was at the card room door, sir. I want to talk to you later. Uh, we'll go down now and talk to Grayson. You'll excuse us, won't you, Asme? For heaven's sake, Walter, pull yourself together. Your actions are absolutely ridiculous. Keep quiet, will you? Grayson? You testified that you never left the card room all evening. Yes. But Millie Scripps has just told me that she could get no answer when she rapped on the door. Yes. That's right. I heard her, but, well, I didn't want to talk to her. How many times did she rap? Three times. Well, that's a good guess. What are you trying to do? Make me the ghost? Now, Walter. Well, why doesn't he leave me alone? I never quarreled with Jim, you know that. Why doesn't he question Colton? Colton quarreled with him all that afternoon. All right, Mr. Colton. I... I forgot about that, Jim. Inspector, I... And nobody knew anything about this murder, eh? I wouldn't be surprised to find another body you've all forgotten about. Oh, my goodness, me. Now, uh, what did you and Kennedy quarrel about? I... I didn't approve of the new will he had drawn up. Why? Because... Uh, because Mrs. Kennedy was disinherited in the new will. My nephew made a will disinheriting his wife, and I didn't know anything about it? Preposterous. Yeah. Did, uh, Kennedy sign that will? Yes. He gave it me on the evening of the party, together with a... with a sealed letter. What was in that letter? I don't know. Oh. Kennedy gave you a letter, and you don't know what was in it? It was to be opened only in case of... his death. Well, have you opened it? No. It was stolen from my coat. In this house. On the night of the murder. You forgot to tell us that also. Mr. Colton, did Mr. Kennedy change the executor in the new will? Yes. I... I was the executor in the old will. Miss Julia is the executrix of... of the latest one. I can quite understand why you should object to the changing of the will, Mr. Colton. Is there anything else you've uh, forgotten, Mr. Colton? No. It's everything. I have an important engagement, if, if I may go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All of you can go now. There are 
several angles I'd like to talk over with you, Mr. Montrose. Well, come over to my house. It's just a short distance. Oh, Philip. Yes. He's sending everybody away. Oh, now don't you worry, Aunt Julia. Inspector Taylor is stationing a policeman on guard on every floor, day and night, until he makes an arrest. Well, isn't somebody going to be arrested now? Well, uh, whom do you suggest? Why, Colton, of course. That lawyer knows what's in the letter and where the will is. Everybody knows that, except that policeman. Some peanuts, Dean? No, thank you. out of the house? No, I've been downstairs. Yeah? Sure a lot of mud down in that parlor. Well, what of it? What are you doing in my room? The police left instructions that all windows are to be locked tonight. I've had the cook prepare a little midnight lunch in the kitchen. Thanks, Steve. I'm sure I'm hungry. Hey, the deacon says there's some chow in the kitchen for us. Come on. Yeah? But Taylor told us not to leave this spot. I'll wait until you come back. Thanks, Steve. Well, well. Well, this certainly is a break. Why didn't you come in the back way? What to tell you? I have a good mind to... You wouldn't dare. Say, them salami and eggs were great. They sure were. Say, is that cook married? I don't know, but I'll make inquiries. Got a cigar? There's a whole humor doffel over here. What? A box. Oh. Please headquarters, please. Hello. Hello, Inspector Taylor. He's not? Oh, uh, this is Millie Scripps, the maid at the Kennedy home. Tell Inspector Taylor if he'll be here tomorrow morning at 9, I may have something important to tell him. No, I 
I tell you, Mr. Montrose, everything points to young Grace. He had every motive. His sister, who supported him, suddenly disinherited, and... Uh, I know, Inspector. But we have just as much reason to suspect the lawyer, or the butler, or Millie Scripps. Millie Scripps? Yeah. There is a dame hasn't told everything she knows by a long shot. I'm going to haul her down to headquarters in the morning and sweat it out of her. Excuse me. Hello? Just a minute. Sergeant Brush wants to talk to you. Thank you. Hello, Sarge. Yeah. She did? Where? Yeah? Nine o'clock. Okay, Sergeant. There you are. Millie Scripps is going to tell us something in the Kennedy home tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Gosh, it's getting late. I've got to be going. Good morning, Inspector. Hi. Are Miss Cripps down yet? This is her day off. I don't think she is. Well, bring her down here. They want Millie Scripps for? I don't know, sir. Oh, yes, you do. You stick them on to her. You always have disliked her. You even dismissed her. Because she was here under false pretenses. Her references were forged. Well, my sister hired her back, didn't she? And for a very good reason, I imagine, Mr. Walter. Listen, Lawrence. If you're insinuating that Millie has anything on my sister, you're all wrong. It's me she threatened. Understand that? Me! So, Millie Scripps threatened you, eh? What were you afraid she'd tell? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? That's what I said, I don't know. She told me if I didn't marry her, she'd go to you with information that would wreck this house from top to bottom. In other words, she knows who committed the murder. Well, that's what she intimated. Who did it? I don't know. Well, Millie Scripps knows, and we'll soon find out. Get Millie Scripps. Why didn't you come through with this before? Why should I? This is my own private affair. Murder isn't anyone's private affair. And when I get through with this girl, I'm going to know plenty about you. thinking about going away anywhere, were you? No, of course not. Well, why not? There's no reason why I should stay here, is there? I'll tell you better after I've talked with Millie Scripps. Beg pardon, sir. Millie Scripps is dead. Millie? Dead? 
Grayson, you come with us. Dead for hours, Chief. Yes, you never knew what hit her. Say, it looks like a struggle. No. Somebody's searching for the letter. Someone who knew she had it. Or thought she had it. Get the medical examiner and post a man here. Inspector. Good morning. Have you uh, talked to Millie Scripps? We're a little late. Millie Scripps is dead. Dead? Yeah. She was killed during the night. I'm arresting young Grayson for the murder. Walter? Congratulations, Inspector. I'm glad you solved the mystery. I'll just bet you are, Colton. All right, Grayson. Oh, Mr. Martos? Too bad. Yes. Too bad. I thought you'd gone. Why, I was just going. Lawrence, ain't you afraid to stay here all by yourself? I'm afraid of nothing. Well, I am not so brave. You have to eat those things all the time. Stop it, will you? Stop it! I've told you before. He'll stop when you get ready to talk. I tell you, I don't know anything. What did you do with the will and the letter, Grayson? I don't know anything about any will or letter. I didn't even know they existed until that old fool Colton mentioned them to you. You're lying, Grayson. You killed Millie Scripps to get that letter. I tell you, I don't know anything about a letter. But you did kill Millie Scripps. 
You murdered your sweetie because you thought she was going to tell... I didn't touch her. I tell you, I didn't touch her. Did she have the letter? How should I know? Don't lie to me, Grayson. I know you've got it. You don't know anything of the sort. You're just bluffing me. What's that sound like to you, Grayson? High voltage? What? Electricity? Oh, no, you don't. You can't scare me. I'm not trying to scare you, Walter. I can make it lots easier for you if you come through. You think it over. Hello? Yes, Lawrence. Inspector, I've got it. I found the letter and the will. You did? Wait a minute. Lawrence says he found the letter and the will where you hid him. Oh, that's a lot of bunk. I don't even believe it's Lawrence on the wire. All right, Lawrence, let's have it. I'm alone in the house, sir. But I've hidden it. Hello? Hello? Hey, Mike, get that Kennedy house back again. What? You can't get him. Something's happened at the Kennedy house. Come on. Keep racing here like it's fast. to force it if you have to. Okay, Chief. You've forgotten your bag, Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, Inspector. How do you do, Mrs. Kennedy? You're not surprised to see me here? I saw your car on the driveway. There uh, doesn't seem to be anybody at home. No, it's the servants day off. You got a key? Certainly. Thank you. Anything wrong? No, I just thought I'd make another try for that letter. In that case, I'm afraid I can't be of any help to you. So if you want me, I'll be in my room. Thank you. Is he dead? No. It's his day off.
sell peanuts. Are you the new butler? No, but they need one. Now, what do you mean? Well, somebody just handed the butler his ticket. There's the latest development. How'd it happen? I don't know. I was talking to the butler on the phone. He told me he'd found the will and the letter. He was just going to tell me where he'd put them when we were cut off. Oh, Carter, will you trace those telephone wires down? That's heavy. Too heavy. Inspector, when you were cut off, what did you do? I took a roll. Precisely. That's what Lawrence did. That's what killed him. How do you mean? This is the same device that was used in the Ferguson case. When Lawrence first jiggled the hook, it broke the contact. The second jiggle released a spring which drove a needle into the base of the brain. Death was instantaneous. Right through the air. That's why we couldn't find any mark on it. The wires have been cut right outside that window. Someone in this house loaded that phone. Who's in the house? Nobody. But Mrs. Kennedy drove up right after we got here. Let's have Mrs. Kennedy down here. Right. Get Mrs. Kennedy. Carter, get to a phone. Report this to headquarters. Let's get the body out of the way. Well, who got it this time? The butler. Take me to the nearest phone. Okay. Mrs. Kennedy, Chief. Inspector Taylor is anxious to know where all the members of the family were this afternoon. Certainly. We all know where my brother is. I've been to the dressmaker and Aunt Julia's over at the Cartwright. Would you mind phoning to see if she's still there? Certainly. That's funny. I, I've forgotten the Cartwright's number. The number is Hillside, 5606. Oh, yes, of course. Hello. Hello. The phone's dead. So's the butler. Lawrence? Dead? Yes. Now, Inspector, you've got to release my brother. He couldn't possibly have done it. Oh, this should definitely eliminate him from the case. Even you must see that. I arrested your brother for the murder of Millie Scripps, and he killed her. Don't forget that. But this does eliminate young Grace. It does not. He could have loaded that phone before he was arrested. He knew the butler always used it. But, Inspector, who cut the telephone wires while you were phoning? Huh? Young Grayson was in jail, you know. Of course. This isn't a murder case. It's an epidemic. Aunt Julie, what's the trouble? It's my gun. 
Somebody took the bullets out and loaded it with blanks. Don't you see what it means? I'm going to be the next one. Now, don't you tell a soul about this. When you go back to your bedroom, reload it with real ones. But, now, but... now. Hi, Mrs. Kennedy. Your room is next. That's perfectly all right. Go right ahead. Yeah. Oh. Any luck, Inspector? No. But I tell you, that letter's right here in this house. It's got to be. You're crazy. That letter isn't in this house. Everybody knows that somebody's got it. I think you're right. Somebody has got it. Who? You. stay in yesterday afternoon. He said he was going to stay home and vacuum the hallway. That peanut nibbler was here the day before. The vacuum? Yeah. They're all wilted. I want you to change them. Ach, but Miss Julia, I should cut them fresh this very morning. That doesn't make any difference. I want them changed. I don't like them. Ach, but hurry up. Go on. I've got them. I found the will and the letter. Well, what are you going to do with them? What am I going to do with them? I'm going to turn them over to the police. Please don't, Julia. Destroy the letter at any rate. Hasn't there been enough tragedy around here already? Esme Kennedy, have you gone clear out of your mind? Do you mean to say that you don't want to see the murderer of your own husband punished? You seem to forget one thing. Whoever has touched those papers has died. You're not safe, not for a minute. I'm not afraid. I'm going to take these right down to the police. Oh. Oh. Roses. Ella, you know how I loathe roses. Please get me something else. Maybe I'd better phone the inspector. Have you forgotten what happened to Lauren? That's right. I won't take him to the police. I'll take him to Philip. Philip Montrose? Yes. Don't tell a soul. I'll run through the back lanes.
Did you want the car, Miss Julie? No. No, I was... I was just going for a walk. Side four four one two. Hello, darling. Did you get the passport? Yes. It's happened. Aunt Julia. She found them in the vacuum sweeper where Lawrence hid them. just left here. Tommy. Oh, never mind the telephone. You can leave for today. But my day off is Tuesday, sir. I know, but I'm going out. Run along now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Julia. I came the back way. Is anybody here with you? Why, no. Good. What on earth has happened? I've got it. Got it? Got what? I've got the will and the letter. Have uh, you opened it? No, not yet. Good. Give it to me. I'll, I'll turn it over to the police. If we give it to that bungling inspector unopened, he'll probably make a mess of this as usual. I'll do nothing of the kind. Julia, remember that everyone who's known the contents of that letter has died. That's why I hurried over here. I know I'm in no danger when I'm with you. Look here, Philip. I'm going to open this letter myself. After all, who found it, I'd like to know. I did. No, oh, give it to me. I'll, I'll give it to Inspector Taylor. I warn you. I've had enough of this nonsense. I'm going to open the letter. know you were coming here? No one. That is, except Esme. Strange. Inspector Taylor wants to talk to you on the phone. Yes, and I've got something to say to him, too. Well, 
Inspector, we've certainly got a surprise for you. After you spent the entire day tearing our house to pieces, I found the will and the letter. Hello? Hello? Father Rachel. Go ahead, sister. I'm listening. Inspector. I don't understand. The funniest telephone call. Mr. Montrose said you were on the line. I have been on the line. I was sure. I wasn't mistaken. Let me have that letter. I'll answer that. Montrose, I'm afraid this call is for you. Thanks, Inspector. Hello. Hello. Oh. Inspector, what? He's dead. Montrose was the murderer. His death is a confession. He took the same route he sent Lawrence. And if you'd clicked the hook, you'd have been dead. Are you? Well, I can't say he didn't warn me. The police department could have used a brain like that. The police department could use any brain. Well, uh, 